Jazakallah khairan Redwan. Shiva, the highly listening, that was beautiful reading. MashaAllah, what is better to start a meeting with than the word of Allah, the Almighty. We have tonight the pleasure of having Sheikh Didat with us in Copenhagen one more evening for another interesting topic. Tonight's topic is the whether the Bible is the word of God. And tonight it will not be a debate, it will be Sheikh Ahmed Didat lecturing us on whether the Bible is the word of God or not. And as it is not a debate, we have no counterpart to take into consideration. So I suggest we give Sheikh Didat completely free hands to end his speech whenever he feels he has said what he has to say. Sheikh Ahmed Didat. Mr. Chairman, my dear brothers and sisters, the verdict has already been given. I read to you an ayah from Surah Al-Baqarah, from the Holy Quran, in which Allah Ta'ala reminds us that woe to those who write the book with their own hands and they say, this is from Allah. That they may reap some small benefit. So woe to them for what their hands do write. And woe to them for what they earn. The verdict is given by Allah that this is something that they have concocted with their own hands. But when we are reasoning with people, we have to reason with them. We can't just say, my book says, yours is not from God, finish and over. No, we have to reason with them. So in reasoning with them, we may ask them, in answer to the question, is the Bible God's word? We say, which Bible are you talking about? He said, no, the Bible. I said, yes, what Bible? Look, I have on the table here one, two, three, four Bibles. And believe me, each and every one is different. It says Holy Bible, Holy Bible, Holy Bible, Holy Bible. Each and every one says Holy Bible, but they are all different. Which one? So I asked Pastor Stanley in Stockholm, which one you want me to discuss? as the word of God. He said, no, 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 when my turn comes, I will tell you. Well, you can't force anything out of a person. But he spoke for an hour, but he never touched the subject. The first question I asked was, which Bible do you accept as the word of God? So we may deal with it. Now, for our information, I might tell you, look, these are all different Bibles. You won't know. You never heard of anything like that before. This particular one here, the short and stumpy size, don't worry about the size. This one here is the Holy Bible of the Roman Catholics. They call it the Douay or Reims version of the Bible. This Bible has got 73 books inside. You might say chapters, they call it books. 73 books to make this one Holy Bible. And they say that between cover to cover, this is the word of God. From cover to cover, inside all the contents, is God's word. This is the Roman Catholic version. This black one here is also the Holy Bible. This is the authorized King James Version, the Bible of the Protestant world. All those who are not Roman Catholics are called Protestants. They protested away from the Roman Catholic Church. Protestants. And this is the Protestant Bible. They call it the King James Version or the Authorized Version. Authorized by who? Not God Almighty, but by King James. This is authorized not by God, by King James. Now in this Bible, there are only 66 books. 
The Roman Catholics have 73, this one has 66. Now, you see, that's a version. This is not the difference in translation, a choice of words. You use one word here and a little variant word there. No, no, no. It's got nothing to do with words. These are seven books in here that the Protestants took it out and threw it away. The Protestant world, the Anglicans, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, the Methodists, the Pentecostals, each and every one of them, they reject the seven books that are in here, seven extra books more than this, as not the word of God. So when we say, okay, okay, we agree with you Protestants, that those seven extra books in the Roman Catholic Bible are not from God. Now we are being attacked, that we are saying that this is not the word of God. I say, you tell us that in this book there are seven books which are not authoritative. They call them apocryphal, apocrypha. What is apocrypha? Ask him, he say, it is doubtful. So when it is doubtful, they threw it out. This has got six less books than that one there. So which one is the word of God, this one or that one? Then I have here two Bibles, and they look identical. Look, the covering and all. They look like twins, don't they? One is used a little more than the other, but there are twins. Coloring, same printers, same publishers, same title. Both say the Holy Bible, Revised Standard Version. The Holy Bible, Revised Standard Version. So what is there to choose between them? You say same. I said, no, they're not the same. <laughs> Again, not the same. Although they are deceiving the people. Look, this is deception. If you had this, and if I had this as well, you think it's the same Bible. It's not the same Bible coming from the same printer, same price, but there is a difference. What is the difference? This is the Revised Standard Version. This was the authorized King James Version, accepted by the bulk of Christendom. Every translation in the vernacular, meaning in the native language of any nation, whether it is in Arabic, Urdu, Gujarati, Zulu, any language, if there is a translation, it is based on this one, the King James Version. Only in English you can get the Revised Version and the Revised Standard Version, not in the other languages. They only give you this one here. Now, this one is a Revised Version, so they will tell you what is the difference. The difference between this Bible and the King James Version, this one also has 66 books. That one has got 66 books. But these will tell you, the publishers of this will tell you, that 32 scholars of the highest eminent, eminence in Christendom, 32, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, they went and produced this Bible. Christians, not Jews, not Muslims, or Hindus, Christians. Scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 cooperating denominations, with their support, they published the Revised Standard Version. What do they claim? They claim that this one here goes to the most ancient manuscripts. This one and the Roman Catholic version goes to the ancient manuscripts. They had manuscripts some four to six hundred years after Jesus. They call them ancient. This one here now, they have access to other older manuscripts going back to the most ancient, that is two to three hundred years after Jesus. So the one closer to Jesus, naturally, will be more authentic than the one coming later on. It's common sense. If we had something given to us from the time of Jesus, in his lifetime, it will still be more authentic. If Jesus Christ had autographed, put his signature onto the volume, it would still be more authentic. So this one goes to the most ancient. The other one goes to ancient, this goes to the most ancient. So when they get the most ancient manuscripts, they find that there are so many things in the accepted versions which are not there. What is in the ancient manuscript is not in the most ancient. So as such, they were honor bound to eliminate them, to eliminate those. 
later editions. Because as the days goes on, mankind has a tendency to add, to add his own explanation, his own ideas. So they said, we must take out what is not supposed to be there. But before they do that, in the preface, they have something beautiful to say about this, the King James Version. They say that the King James Version has with good reason been termed the noblest monument of English prose. As far as language goes, in the English language, there is nothing comparable to it. The authorized King James Version of the Bible, as far as the language goes. It revises in 1881, express admiration for its simplicity, its dignity, its power, its happy turns of expression, the music of its cadences, and the felicities of its rhythm. It entered, as no other book has, into the making of the personal character and the public institutions of the English-speaking people. We owe to it an incalculable debt. This book, what it did to the English-speaking people, the Americans, the British, or anybody who speaks English, what it has done for them, the language is so beautiful, simple, powerful, musical, everything is in that book. That is the tribute they pay to that book, these revisers, to that old book, one of the most beautiful pieces of English literature, the authorized King James Version of the Bible. But now prepare for the shock. I'm sure you won't be shocked, but if they were Christians, they would be shocked.